Hi, and welcome to the 2022 uh, cross country rules and update. I'm Jen Robert Julig, your assistant commissioner overseeing cross country. Thank you so much for being here. We're excited for the upcoming year. It seems like it summer goes by too fast, but it's always exciting to come right into the cross country season. So super excited to get the season off and running. As usual, we have our amazing rules and terp for the state of Colorado, Casey Logan, and he'll be delivering your rules today. You do need to watch this video in its entirety. And at the end, it will give you that green check mark in your R school platform um, saying that you have completed the rules meeting. Uh, we will do a preseason meeting prior to the season so that if you have any questions or anything we can answer, uh, we'll definitely try to do so. So be looking for some information. Otherwise, good luck and have a great season. Well, welcome. It's hard to believe that cross country is um, nearly upon us here. Um, not a lot of changes this year as far as the rules go, just more clarification. So we'll go through the slides fairly quickly. The only rule change that was in the 2022 rule book uh, was really uh, just more of a, a clarification. You see the bolded there. They, the last couple of years, they'd rewritten the, um, the cross country course uh, rule wording to make it uh, more clarifying. They also added a note in the 2022 uh, rule book that talked about a, if a single wide, uh, wide line is used uh, to mark the course, if you're also using that on turns, uh, utilize other methods of marking um, so the runners know exactly basically where the inside of that turn is. It could be you know it could be a tree, it could be you know some boulders, you could also use flagging whatever the case may be. But, um, uh, it, you know, marking the course um, properly is, you know, important for safety of the runners as well as accurate uh, measure the course. And so, you know, athletes definitely, definitely know where to go. Uh, the other big change for this season, which um, if you participate in the track season, you also seen this slide and know that it's a, it's a good, it's a good rule change, you know, um, in, in our sport, uniform bottoms are increasingly being purchased by the athletes, um, you know, with some uh, guidance from coaches that maybe need a, want a specific color or whatever the case may be. And it's, it's, it's more and more difficult to find um, the compression shorts which a lot of the athletes are choosing to wear uh, without, you know, oversized manufacturers logos on the waistband or multiple manufacturers logos on the waistband and and coaches and athletes have done a really good job here in Colorado over the last several years by you know tucking those down or coloring them in uh, black and so they wouldn't be seen but the uh, National Federation this uh, past season uh, said we're 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 done with we're done with all that we're just we're going to ignore the waistband which is a really good rule change um, one thing that is important with that change is that Remember that um, if those are worn as your uniform bottom, that it's, it's still the two and a quarter inch square uh, dimensions that are that are permitted are still in force for the rest of the the rest of the short. So this only applies to the to the waistband. That's all this applies to. So um, shorts that have maybe two maybe two logos on them, one on each side of the leg. You know that that would be uh, non-compliant, or some that have much larger than two and a quarter inch square dimensions would would also be uh, non-compliant. So just be aware of that. Um, this was added to the uh, uniform rule. It's not really a change. They just put it specifically in the rule book that athletes uh, may wear head coverings for religious reasons. Uh, must fit securely, be made of non-abrasive or soft materials. Um, in Colorado and in most states around the country, um, we, we have permitted religious head coverings, but in most cases, and it has been true in Colorado, coaches have gotten permission from Janet Chassa to be able to do that. That's no longer necessary. Um, it, it, you know, it it's, doesn't need approval by the state association. Um, if it's another kind, if it's a medical, you know, head covering one for medical reasons, that would still require approval from Chassa, but religious headwear is, um, is fine, does not need approval anymore. 
Um, this slide you've seen for many, many years since the um, National Federation changed the rules guidelines uh, significantly in 2019. And one thing that um, that Chasa attempted to do to help clarify the rules, uh, which really were loosened up quite a bit by the National Federation, was to have a set of guidelines for our state on how officials would interpret uh, what what a uni what uniform compliance is. Um, one thing that's difficult is we've you know as manufacturers continue to change designs of uniforms, and I know that's that's an issue for coaches when they order new uniforms, even if they have the same order number, there might be a, a small design change that ends up being a big design change as well. And so you really have to be careful of that. And we updated our, uh, our guidelines here this uh, past spring, and you see the, the changes here in bold. Uh, nothing has changed in the first three bullets. Um, you, just like it pretty much says in the rule book, uniform top, same predominant color. Uh, in the front and the back, uh, same school name or logo. The back of the uniform top, same thing, same predominant color or same school name or logo. The uniform bottom has the same predominant color in the front and back. In Colorado, for since 2019, we've said that side panels or striping on the uniform top and bottom, uh, whether they exist or not, would not be a factor in determining compliance. Again, with some of the changes in the manufacturer's design, we actually have now added a definition for what side panels are uh, on the uniform top and bottom. So in bold there, we have defined side panels on the uniform top that they extend from under the arm to the bottom hem. On the uniform bottom, side panels extend from the side waistband to the bottom hem. So we're starting to see some quote, side panels that don't specifically stay on the side. So side panels that wrap to the front or the back of the garment do not meet compliance unless all team members on the cross country team are wearing them. So here's an example that uh, helps us show the difference and um, clarifies our side panel definition. So you can see the two uh, uniform tops here. The uniform top on the right that would be considered a side panel because it, start, it starts from under the arm. It doesn't go all the way to the bottom hem, but it, but it does stay on the side of the uniform. So that, that would not be a factor. That's a side panel that would not be a factor in determining compliance. However, the uniform top on the left, you know, it, it extends above the arm, goes all the way down to the hem, but you can see that it extends up, up above, the, um, above the arm onto the very top. And in the next, um, the next slide, the back, you can see it extends on the back. So though that uniform would be considered a different design. And if, if uh, you know, your team was going to wear those uniforms, every, everybody would need to be in, the, in that uniform um, that, has, that has the white up, up the front and up the side. Um, so just, just, make, just make sure of that when you're, when you're uh, dressing your kids here for the coming season. Uh, just uniform reminders. Remember that on the uniform top and the uniform bottom, there's really only four things you can have on that uniform top. It can be school name, school logo, school nickname, or the competitor's name can actually be on there. Anything in addition to that makes the uniform non-compliant. So if you've got a, you know, a team phrase or, um, you know, um, anyway, a quote from something or anything in anything in addition to that um, is then it can't can't be worn on the uniform top. So if you have something like that, I would definitely contact uh, you know Jen or myself and and we can you know yay or nay that uh, as well. Also, um, remember that's been enforced for several years too, that anything that's worn under the uniform top or the uniform bottom is just considered a foundation garment. Foundation garments have no logo, trademark, color restrictions at all. So, um, you know, that's, that's, not a, that's not a factor as long as something is, is over those things that are worn. If the uniform top and uniform bottom uh, is worn over those. And the third one is just basically what it says in our guidelines and what it says in the rule book uh, about uh, uniform compliance. 
Um, in uh, for track this year, we um, updated what the games committee will allow an excess of the uniform at the uh, uh, upcoming state championships in 2022. Uh, some of these we've allowed, but we've also modified and expanded some things and restricted some things as well. So, and this is in the bulletin. There's a, a couple of things in the bulletin. The updated uh, uniform uh, bullets are in there and also along, along um, these items that can be worn in excess of that as well. So sunglasses, we've always allowed sunglasses to be worn. Hats may be worn by competitors, but we, you know, what needs to be recognized athletic wear, no floppy hats and stuff. Uh, baseball caps are fine as long as they're used for sun blocking. So no baseball caps facing backwards. Gloves may always be worn by competitors in cross country. Uh, hair devices to control the hair, any of that is, uh, is fine, can be hard, soft, uh, could be headbands, clips, bobby pins, ribbons, barrettes, uh, even some things I may not even have on there. But uh, decorative hair bows, which we do see quite a bit uh, in, during the cross country season, decorative hair, hair bows will be allowed, but they're limited to uh, any size and no greater than three inches in any one dimension to be worn in the hair. So if you have anything uh, larger than that, uh, people are gonna have to pare those down. And then we've just added the head coverings worn for religious reasons, just with the, uh, the addition to the rule book there uh, as well. As far as, um, as far as uniforms go throughout the regular season and uh, things that are worn in excess of that, um, you know, if you're hosting a meet or you go to a meet, you can certainly follow the guidelines that we will follow in state for items worn in excess of the um, uni required uniform. Uh, but at the same time, you know, the host school and your games committee can determine uh, you can be more restrictive than this. Uh, you can be more open than this. That's entirely up to you as long as as coaches and officials and, and athletes, athletes know that. I would say that during the regular season, I can't speak for all officials, but I can speak for probably the majority of officials, uh, especially when they officiate early in the season and they're looking at uniforms. Um, they'll, they will, we look really, you know, carefully, especially at the varsity races, uh, when you have open and JV races and you have, you know, tons and tons of kids in there, um, that's, that's really not an issue because we know it's very difficult to, you know, have, have kids in those sub varsity races that don't have, um, you know, that, that may not have a compliant uniform just because of the numbers of kids you have out there, uh, other than in, on varsity, um, you know, if we see, if we see, you know, if we see something, um, we would, we would try to have the athlete corrected. If, if not, most of us would let the athlete go ahead and run, but we definitely talked to the coach to make sure they corrected that as the season went on, because one thing that we just don't want to happen is for you to show up at the regional meet, to, you know, and trying to qualify for state and having, uh, having the uniform. Uh, disallowing a kid to run that can't that can't make that change. So just keep that in mind. That's really it as far as uh, as far as changes as far as the rules go and and things we've changes that we've made in the bulletin. Uh, good luck and and have a really really good season. Hope we get some good weather and uh, have a good year. If you have any questions um, prior to the season or during the season, don't hesitate to. Uh, to contact myself or Jen or Gary Strubel. He's the uh, CTFOA president, most of you know that. And uh, one, one of the three of us will probably get lucky and, and be able to answer that question. So our emails are on there and I think you'll find phone numbers in the bulletin as well. Thanks for your time, good luck.